Hello. So today I'm going to cover the introduction to section 3.2. Uh, this is open and closed sets of the real line. Okay, so as you're watching, I can really recommend that you have your book out, you have some pen and paper ready, uh, so you can you know, work through your examples on your own, maybe do some auxiliary examples from the book or some problems from the book to help build your own intuition. Okay, so to begin, let's formally define neighborhood. Okay, we've seen this definition before in the context of convergence, but we never really formalized it. So let's formalize it here. Let A be a real number and epsilon be a positive number. Then the epsilon neighborhood is the set denoted B sub epsilon of A, and this is simply all numbers which are epsilon close to A. Okay, so as a picture, this is simply I give you a point A, and I give you some epsilon tolerance around that point A, right? And everything which is within this open interval is the neighborhood. Okay, so in other words, this is simply equal to the open interval A minus epsilon up to A plus epsilon. Okay, so the notation I often use is B sub epsilon. The book will use V sub epsilon. It's you know the same exact set, just written a different way. Okay, so with epsilon neighborhood defined, we can now define what it means to be an open set. So a set O, subset of the real line, is open if for every A in the set O, there exists some epsilon neighborhood, which is a subset of the set O. Okay, so as a picture, what does this mean? Well, suppose I give you a set O, and you want to prove to me that it's open. Well, that means given any A within that set O, you need to find an epsilon neighborhood which is sufficiently small so that the epsilon neighborhood is contained within the bigger set O. Okay, so for example, in this picture, this size of epsilon would work. Okay, we should be careful that depending on the value of A, Right? I might have to choose different values of epsilon. Okay, so for example, if I chose this A, which is very close to the edge of O, of course I can't take a large value of epsilon like this, right? Because now you see I run into a problem where parts of my neighborhood have fallen outside of my original set O. Okay, so I'd have to take a smaller size of epsilon here to work. Okay. So Let's get some examples of open sets. Okay, so the prototypical example, of course, is one we're familiar with, the open interval. Okay, so an open interval from A to B is open. So to prove this, let X be any element of the open interval. And then let's take a particular value of epsilon. We need to make it small enough. So I claim that the choice B minus x and a minus x. Okay, so let's take uh, an absolute value, make sure everything's positive. So if I take the minimum of these two distances, I claim that this is the right size epsilon. Well, indeed, as a picture, what am I doing? Well, between a and b, I fixed any value x, and I'm defining epsilon to be the smaller distance, either the distance between x and b, or the distance between a and x, right? One of these is smaller, and if I take epsilon to be that smaller distance, then certainly it satisfies the epsilon neighborhood of x being a subset of a, b. Okay, and this argument would work for any value of x, right? Of course, the epsilon will change, but no matter which x I take inside this interval, I can always find some epsilon neighborhood which satisfies this subset condition. Okay, so this shows that the open interval a, b is, a, of course, an open set, okay, as the name would suggest. Okay, what are some other examples of open sets? Well, an example might be the empty set. Okay, we would say that this is actually vacuously open. What does that mean? Well, does it satisfy the definition of openness? Well, the definition of openness says for all elements of a set, some you know criterion is satisfied. But since there's no elements of the empty set, it's trivially true that right, it's open. So it's trivially or vacuously true. 
So empty set is open. Uh, another trivial example of an open set is R, the whole real line. Notice that for all real numbers, X, so for anything inside the set, I can simply take, for example, the one neighborhood of X. And certainly this is a subset of R. Okay, you notice that I could have taken anything here. It could have been the 10 million size neighborhood of X. It still is a subset of R, right? And so since this uh, subset condition is satisfied, then any real number, right, for, and this works for any real number, then R is indeed open. Okay. How about an example of something that's not open? Well, let's take, for example, the closed interval from A to B. I claim that this is not an open set. Indeed, let's consider the endpoints, right? These are the problematic points. Notice that B is an element of the closed interval, but for any epsilon you give me, it certainly is not the case that the epsilon neighborhood of B can possibly be a subset of AB. Right? Again, this is clear from the picture. What happens if I'm at the point B exactly? Well, I take any epsilon tolerance you notice that there's always going to be a little bit of your interval, the right half of it, right, which lands outside of the set AB. Okay, and so this uh, leads to a problem, and so we can conclude immediately that the set AB closed is not open. Okay. So we've defined openness using neighborhoods. To define closed, right, we're going to have to use what's called limit points. So the definition of limit point is a point x is a limit point of the set A if now for every epsilon neighborhood, then this neighborhood B epsilon will intersect A at some other point other than x itself. Okay? And so you can think about limit points of really being a measure of x is close to A. Okay, and I'm putting this in quotes. It's not a very precise way of saying x is close, uh, but okay, it's a, it gives us an intuition. Okay, so as a picture, how do we think about this? Well, we're given some set. Let's say again the open interval from A to B, and I claim that B is a limit point. Okay, why is that? Well, you see that no matter what epsilon neighborhood I take around B, okay. Is it true that I can always find some point x, sorry, uh, let's not call it x, uh, let's call it the point c, and you notice that c is an element of the original interval, and it's also an element of the epsilon neighborhood of b, and of course I can choose it so that c is not equal to b itself. Okay. And so since this you know, existence of something like this C works for any value of epsilon, no matter how small of an epsilon I take, then this shows that B is a limit point. Okay. So perhaps a more natural way of thinking about limit points is given by the name limit. Right? So limit points are precisely the things which are realizable as sequences of the set A. Okay, so we'll prove that in the following theorem. So a point X is a limit point of a set A if and only if X is the limit of some sequence AN which is contained in A and it's never equal to the point X um, itself. Okay, so let's write down a quick proof of this theorem. For the forward direction, okay, it's an if and only if, I need to prove two different directions. For the forward direction, let's first assume that x is a limit point. And what does that mean? Well, by definition, this means for all epsilon bigger than 0, I can always find some a which lives in the intersection of both a and the epsilon neighborhood of x such that a is not equal to x itself. 
Okay, so this is just applying the definition of limit point. Well, in particular, let's take epsilon equal to 1 over n. Okay, I need to cook up a sequence, right? So let's take epsilon equal to 1 over n, then applying the definition above, this means I can get some, let's call it a sub n, which lives in a intersect the 1 over n neighborhood of x with a sub n not equal to x. Okay, well, if I translate this condition, what does it mean for a n to be in the 1 over n neighborhood of x? Well, it simply means that the distance between a n and x is strictly less than 1 over n. Okay, so it immediately follows that the sequence a sub n that we've constructed Right, for each n, I get a different a sub n, right, applying this definition. And so I immediately get that a sub n converges to x, okay, based on this inequality. So I'm leaving out the details of this proof, but it certainly is a very straightforward proof of convergence here, okay? So that's it, that shows the forward direction. Okay, we've constructed a sequence converging to x and it's never equal to x itself, right? So let's go for the backwards direction. So now I get to assume that uh, there is some sequence of a n which converges to x. All of these a n live inside of a and they're never equal to x, right, for all n. All right, so what do I want to show? I need to prove that x is a limit point. Okay, well, in order to show something's a limit point, let's let epsilon be bigger than zero. And I need to find something, right, that's both in A and the epsilon neighborhood of x. Well, we're of course going to use the fact that we have a convergence sequence here. So epsilon is bigger than zero by the definition of convergence. There certainly exists a capital N in the naturals such that for all n bigger than or equal to capital N, we have the distance between a sub n and x is less than epsilon. Well, what does this criterion mean? Again, we're just going to translate this. This means a sub n is an element of b sub epsilon of x. But that's really all we need to show, right? So we can take, you know, this works for all little n bigger than or equal to capital N. Let's just take a sub capital N as a, an example. So A sub capital N is an element of A. It's also an element of the epsilon neighborhood of X. And by assumption, it's not equal to X itself. So for every epsilon bigger than zero, we can construct something which lives inside this intersection, which is not equal to X. That's the definition of showing something that's a limit point. So that concludes our proof. Okay. So now we have some intuition that limit points are things that are close or really, the better way of saying it, limit points are things which are realizable as a sequence of elements inside of a set. And so we can now define closed as a set F is closed if it contains all of its limit points. Okay. So as, say, two examples to compare, we have the open set AB and the closed set AB. Well, these intervals, and I claim that, well, unsurprisingly, the closed interval should be closed sets and the open interval should not be a closed set. Well, in order to check something's closed, we need to first ask, what are all the limit points? So what are the limit points of the open interval AB? Well, certainly everything within the closed interval AB is a limit point. Why is that? Well. Notice that any point which I give you inside of the interval, 
Well, this is realizable as a sequence of other points, right? If I just take some sequence getting closer and closer to that point. Uh, and if I take either A or B itself, right, then I can take a sequence which gets closer and closer from the interior of the set, right, to the boundary. Okay, so everything, indeed, everything inside the closed interval AB is a limit point. And everything outside that interval, of course, is not a limit point, right? And it turns out, right, that the argument I just gave works exactly the same way for the closed interval AB. And so which of these is a uh, closed set? Well, certainly the closed interval does contain its limit points, right? And the open set doesn't contain its limit points, right? A and B are limit points, but they're not contained within the open interval, okay? So to define, to check something's closed, we need to figure out what its limit points are and check if they're contained inside of the set. Okay, so what are some other examples of closed sets? Well, certainly we just showed that closed intervals are cl closed. What about a singleton set? So if I give you the set A, which is the set containing exactly the number one, then what are the limit points? Well, it turns out that there are no limit points. Right? I can ask, what are all the things that are realizable as a sequence of elements of A? Well, the only sequence I can create out of A is 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, which converges only to itself, right? But remember, when I'm creating limit points, I can't uh, take the limit of the thing I'm converging to to be any of the terms in the sequence. And so in this case, there are no limit points of the set A. And so it's trivially true that it contains all of its limit points. And thus, it must be closed. Uh, what are some other examples? Maybe if I gave you the empty set again, what are the limit points? Of the empty set? Again, there are none. So again, sort of vacuously, it's true that the empty set is closed. And the real line? Well, what are all the things that are realizable as sequences of real numbers? Well, in this case, the limit points are exactly all of the real line again. And so does R contain all of R? Well, yes, of course it does. And so this shows that R is closed. And so we notice something very particular here, which is that we've just said that empty set and R are both open and closed. All right, before we get too much further, let's get a non-example in here. So what's something that is not a closed set? Uh, so let's take, for example, the open interval at A with a closed point at B. Okay, so this is like the half open interval from A to B. I claim that this is not closed. Indeed, note that A is a limit point of this set, but certainly A is not contained within this set. Okay, so because this does, set does not contain all of its limit points, we can conclude that it is not closed. But then, you know, you might have a desire to say that, well, if, since it's not closed, it must be open. We have to be very careful about that in mathematics. So open and closed are not opposites. So I made a special slide just to emphasize this fact that not open is not the same thing as closed and vice versa, not closed is not the same thing as open. Okay, so be careful that, for example, the empty set and R we just saw can be both open and closed. And then the set we just saw, the half open, half closed interval from A to B, 
is neither open nor closed. So a set could be open, it could be closed, it could be both, or it could be neither. Okay, so be very careful in mathematics to never make the mistake, the common mistake, of deducing that if something's not open, you can conclude that it's closed. That's incorrect. Right? We can never make such an assumption or never make such a conclusion about sets. Okay, okay. so one last definition to introduce is what does it mean to be an isolated point? Well, we say a point A inside of a set A is an isolated point if it's not a limit point. Okay, well, we saw some example before, right? The set A, which is exactly the singleton set, 1, well, 1 we saw is not a limit point. Since it's contained in, within the set A, we can conclude then that it is an isolated point. Perhaps more illustrative is the following example. Suppose I gave you the set which contains the number 1 and the closed interval from 2 to 3. Okay. So in this example I can ask, well what are the limit points of this set? Well, it's exactly the closed interval from 2 to 3, right? Everything in this closed interval can be realized as a sequence of elements, which are not, you know, identically the limit itself. And I can ask, what are the isolated points? And in this case, the only isolated point is just 1, right? And you can see why it gets the name isolated. It's because it's, you know, isolated from everything else in the set, right? There's nothing else that's close to it, okay? And so just one important comment to make about limit points and isolated points is that limit points may or may not be contained within the set, right? This is really a, a question about whether or not a set is closed, right? If a set is closed, then we know it does contain its limit points. If it's not closed, it might not contain all of its limit points, okay? And then isolated points, well, by definition, these always must be contained within the set. Okay, so isolated points are points within the set that are not close to anything else in the set. Okay. So with all this new language, uh, let me just make a comment about the density of Q inside the real numbers. So we saw this before at the beginning of the course. What does it mean to be dense? Well, we said that for all A and B real numbers, such that A is strictly less than B, that there existed some Q, a rational number, such that a was strictly less than q was strictly less than b. Okay. So in other words, we said that you know the density of q is just to say that the rational numbers are everywhere on the real line, right? Between any two real numbers, you can always find a rational. So we can actually rephrase this statement using our new language. So for all a and r, we can say that uh, a is a limit point. Of Q. Or using our theorem to sort of recast this as a statement about sequences, we can say for all real numbers, there exists a sequence of rationals. Qn, which converges to A. Okay, so sometimes people will say that this is a statement about every real number can be approximated by rationals. Right? Be approximated. But in spirit, all three of these statements really say the same thing. The rationals are everywhere. They're very dense within R. Okay. So what is your homework? Well, your homework is to think about the following question. So for class on Tuesday, we're going to discuss uh, the following question, and I'd like you to all have some ideas of how to approach it. 
So construct an example of each of the following sets or prove why it's impossible. So first, I'd like a set that has every point being a limit point, a set that doesn't have any limit points, a set that has exactly one limit point, an infinite set that has exactly one isolated point, and a countable subset of 0, 1 that doesn't have any limit points. Okay, so some of these are easier than others. Some of them you actually already have examples of, um, and you have many examples of some of them, uh, and some of them are a little bit trickier. Okay, so take some time, really think about this, and I'll see you on Tuesday.